Hello everyone, how are you doing? Happy Thursday. We're here all the way live from Sohom with Brenda, Dr. Brenda Devani. Hello everyone. And also with Julia, one of our therapies expert in Abhyanga, Swetna, and Shirodara. And we're going to be talking about all that today. Um, but just to back up a little bit, you probably join us if you were able to last month where we talked about the science of panchakarma and we had dr brenda divani with us she is an expert on this topic so she was able to answer a lot of questions about the before the during and the after of panchakarma especially about how we do it here at Soham, right mm -hmm. yeah, yeah we had a lot of questions from all the participants yes yeah and it was a really beautiful conversation it's one of my favorite topics that i love to talk about and I love to nerd out about because I just think it's so fascinating that thousands of years ago, um, this formula of bunch of karma came to existence and is mainly based on their own like keen observation, their own meditations. And now several thousand years later, when we have this amazing technology and science, we can understand like why and how, and just appreciate how fascinating was that thousands of years ago they just they knew you know they figured it out but there's it's just beautiful to me yes yes and we covered a lot of that so if you missed that um webinar please feel free to go back or send us an email we'll be happy to send it to you but this is a set way to that today we're going to be focusing on the different therapies and there's three main ayurvedic therapies that we do here at Soham for our panchakarma experience the first one is Abhyanga, which is the warm oil massage, and we're going into more detail about that. We're also, also having a live demonstration on how we do it. And then we also do the um, Swetna and the Shirodara. But those two we're going to save for another webinar, so that way we can focus today on Abhyanga. But let's start with Brenda. So <laughs> since she's the scientist, the doctor <laughs> that's got all that expertise that I love picking in and connecting the dots. So why don't you tell us a little bit about body work? What mm. does body work mean and why is it so essential in today's life? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, there are main avenues through which we can impact the body. One is through knowledge and certainly having the right understanding can already shift the body and the way it works just through pure knowledge. Um, in Ayurveda, there's a saying that where attention goes, your prana flows. And so if your attention and your awareness of your body and its physiology shifts, then the prana will flow in that manner as well. The second way is through like what we take into our body, like orally. Um, herbs are a perfect example and definitely that being ingested and then spreading to our body and having direct action in that way, um, the intelligence of plant is like a whole nother web <laughs> webinar topic that we can do, but um, that the awakening that happens through what we take through our mouth and ingest internally. And then body work, you know, in Ayurveda, that we equally place, we place equal emphasis on external. So we have when we're talking about like how to approach a client, we talk about internal taking in substances as well as external because our skin, first of all, is the largest organ. If you it think is. about the surface area and how much it can absorb, it is considered the largest organ, right, Julia? It's like a known thing and it is extremely absorptive. Mm -hmm. And so what we take, which is why we place so much emphasis on like, what products do you put on your face? What lotion do you put? What are the chemicals? Like even when you're washing your sheets, you know, like what are the chemicals on that? So first of all, your skin is just highly absorptive. And the second thing, which I know Julia can talk ad nauseum about is just the power of just touch. Um, when I was doing research with Banyan Botanicals, we did this study on the impact of self-massage and we compared it to professional massage mm. and the impact of just touching even just you doing your own massage doing that for 30 minutes every day the results were really really amazing and comparative to a professional massage obviously professional massage is just a different level but it is comparable and it just speaks to how impactful touches and there's so much that gets released we have so many nerve 
endings in our skin. And so many messages are being sent to our brain. We know that just touch and hug increases mm. oxytocin, which is the love hormone, which can directly decrease cortisol levels in the body. We know that serotonin, or the happy hormone, can increase as well with touch. You know, cortisol just decreases on its own. And so just the impact of touch as well is well, well known. And I'm sure you could speak so much more to that. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I think that's really the first language that we learned as mm -hmm. babies is touch, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's a touch between a mother and a child or, you know, a hug for someone you love or anything like that. And I think that's such an important part to all of our well-being is just touch and having a touch that feels loving and safe and compassionate is so important and so beneficial for us okay. wow. <laughs> yeah because it does take it to a totally different level right like from you know thinking oh this is just simply a massage or i'm going there just to relax it's more so all those different benefits that come along with doing the proper body work and actually bringing awareness, right? And intentionality, like, why am I doing this? Mm -hmm. And the awareness as to how is this improving my overall well-being, my mind, my body, my soul, just yes. everything, right? And in Ayurveda, you know, we talk about different dimensions of a being. Mm -hmm. So there's the very physical being, and then there's like the pranic layer and so on and so forth. And what I feel is like body work, it taps into those subtler levels very, very directly. It opens up the heart space almost instantly. Like you talk about um, the touch between a mother and the baby, like the heart just opens. So and when the heart opens, you get out of the head mm -hmm. and the healing is profound. We see this with our Panchakarma clients every week, you know, mm -hmm. like they come in saying like, I want support with my joints. I want support with my heart. And there's so much un emotional unpacking that happens with it. I, I think it's so much attributable to the body work. And when you get at that level, you're really supporting the client at a root deep level. Yeah. And I'm so glad that you brought that up because right before we started this, <laughs> actually, we were having a conversation about a client who shared exactly that. Yes. Um, she was saying that the first day that she arrived here, right, Julia, she said, one of the things that I really want to work on is on heart opening because she had felt like she was having a little bit of a hard yes. time either communicating, even receiving. Right. Yes. And then today she <laughs> said, I had a tear coming out of my eyes when I was doing Abhyanga. Mm -hmm. So it was so beautiful and profound to see how finally she's allowing her heart to open and letting those feelings to come through. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's where the healing takes place. So now that we know what body work means mm -hmm. and actually the scientific also benefits of it for the mind, the body and the soul, Let's um, now turn into Julia here for a little bit, and it will be beneficial for all of you to actually know a little bit more about Julia, just aside from the fact that she is her senior therapist here at Sohom, but her background is so, you know, something that I really want her to share because she's been working with Dr. Ladd for many years. She worked with us in New Mexico, um, and now she's here with us in Asheville, North Carolina for a really good reason, and it's because she's really good at what she does. And she's dedicated. And she's really dedicated. Yeah. And the love that she gives to the clients when she does it. So um, why don't you tell us a little bit of your background and how you started on all this? Sure. Thank you. So I started working in the Panchakarma department years ago. I worked in Panchakarma in Albuquerque for about seven years. And when I was there, I was a therapist. Uh, first therapy I did was Shiradhara, mm. which is the treatment with the oil on the third eye. And I just fell in love with it. As mm -hmm. soon as I started doing Shiradhara, I'm like, I'm in, I want to learn <laughs> more body work. This is what I'm supposed to do. So I decided to go to massage school after that. Um, I went to New Mexico School of Natural Therapeutics and I got a license in massage therapy. And then I'm also a natural therapeutic specialist. And then I started doing Abhyanga once I had that massage license. And I love Abhyanga. Um, I did that for years in the Panchakarma Center as well. Uh, eventually became the operations manager in the Panchakarma department in Albuquerque. And then uh, a couple of years ago, I had a really cool opportunity where we um, had a massage school in New Mexico. It was the New Mexico School of Massage. 
And as soon as I heard about that, I was like, I I mean, (laughs) like, I want to be involved with this. This is so cool. So I was a teacher there for a couple years. Um, I was also the director of the school and had a great time doing that, teaching students massage. So I taught, you know, very basics of body work, very basics of massage, like the, what we would call like Swedish massage or classic massage. But then I also taught a whole section on Ayurveda and uh, uh, specifically Abhyanga massage, since it was a massage school. And um, yeah, taught quite a few students there. Mm -hmm. And then uh, heard about Soham opening. (laughs) (laughs) Decided to move to Asheville here and come work at Soham. And now I've taught all of our therapists here, all of the treatments that we do. So all of the Abhyanga, Swedan, Shiradara, And then we've even been adding some new ones, which has been really fun to just bring us to a place of being a more authentic, traditional Ayurvedic Panchakarma center, Mm -hmm. which has been so much fun because a lot of these treatments you wouldn't get at a regular spa. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't see them anywhere else, um, which is one thing that I think makes Soham really unique. Yeah. And may I embellish a little bit on, Mm -hmm. on Julia. Julia is this like amazing balance of like such a heart centered person Mm -hmm. with this amazing, like she has like the perfect balance of the left and the right brain. (laughs) You know, like she can organize. She, I mean, organizing 10 Pancha Karma clients, all their schedules with the therapist and all their body work and all their other schedules is not an easy task. And she does it in such a graceful way. And she also does in a way that the clients feel very held. It's not overwhelming. She'll point it out to us like, hey, I think this is gonna be too overwhelming for the client. Mm -hmm. So she's also not just like, focused on the therapy itself but also the client experience with the therapies and we really really appreciate that and just her I mean she was being modest in her role at the New Mexico School of Massage but she is a top tier education specialist like she really educates in such a great way the students loved her so I always say you don't really know a topic unless you're able to teach it and so I just hope that speaks to her um, expertise in this area. So to say that she fell in love with it is <laughs> actually an understatement. <laughs> um, all right. So let's start diving deeper into the treatments. So we know now that through the Panchakarma process, there is three signature treatments. We have the Abhyanga, we have the Swetna, and we have the Shirodhara. And all three are necessary within the Panchakarma experience, right? So Brenda, why don't you tell us about um, why are all three necessary yeah. within the Panchakarma? And we also offer that within our Serenity yeah. Retreat. So Absolutely. So this we kind of call it our whole body serenity. It's like one flow of a sequence and this is one of the best sequences you can have to really get you into a deep relaxation state a lot of people offer shiradara alone or you know just a young alone the shiradara without getting your body settled which i'm sure you can speak to it's it's a different experience so we really believe in that first likewise the massage is fantastic, but the shiradara really kind of puts you in a deep, deep relaxation state with the pouring of the oil on the forehead. So this combination starting out with the touch throughout the body to really ground the body, to really settle the body. And oil is so, it's like heavy, it's dense, it really nourishes the body as well. And then going into a sweat box, just to open the, open the pores and allow that oil, often herbalized, to deeply penetrate the skin and access the rest of your body. And then after that, you settle back in and you have the shiradara pouring on the forehead. And yes, like Sandy was explaining, not only is this important for um, our panchakarma, they receive this every single day while they're mm-hmm. with us. In addition to other therapies that are specific to them, this is kind of everyone gets this. We also believe that that is, you know, body work is just that important that even the people who stay with us more for a serenity r- retreat, just a retreat, a leisure stay, we also have them have that, you know, we give that to them as well because. 
Um, you can come and say, enjoy the food, but to have body work and to receive touch is so deeply nourishing. So it's, we do have it as both It's a cornerstone in any state with us. Nice, nice. And as you can see, the signature treatments, that serenity package um, or treatments that you're getting on a daily day, day to day basis uh, with Panchakarma. And um, for the serenity is almost like getting your toes dipped into the Ayurvedic practices. So if you haven't have it, haven't had it before, coming here for the first time, three nights or four nights, and having that experience for the first time, then allows you to see what it feels like and the benefits of it, and then you can stay here for the seven night. So out of all three, the very first one is Abhyanga. And Abhyanga, again, is the warm oil massage performed by two therapies. So why don't you describe that for us and tell us a little bit more about the whole Abhyanga. What is it? So Abhyanga, most basically, it's just a lot of oil massaged into your entire body. That's the very basics of it. But we've, um, with Dr. Laud, this is Dr. Laud's sequence that he created. He's kind of taken it to the next level of what Abhyanga is. So we incorporate Marma therapy into the massage, uh, which is working on points in the body, just certain energetic points. We also incorporate polarity therapy. Um, it's great for lymphatic so it's a very lymphatic massage, a little bit lighter than like a traditional like deep tissue massage that you might have at a spa. Um, and what the Abhyanga is, is really the foundation of the detox within Panchakarma, that every move that we do, there's a reason for it. This is a, it's a very long sequence. When I have it printed out, it's about 200 steps. Wow. So it's a very long sequence that Dr. Ladd created where every move is curated by Dr. Ladd, where it's, we do this we do this particular move five times and then we do here and you have one therapist here doing this and another therapist here doing something slightly different and everything in that treatment is so intentional that it has a purpose that we're moving the toxins this way now and now we're doing this for this reason and this point is good for these things and all of those things work together to support the client in the panchakarma process Another part of Abhyanga that I love um, is the word sneha, mm -hmm. means uh, oil, it also means love. So really what Abhyanga is, is a saturation of oil, but it's also a saturation of love. Mm. That it's a really beautiful, loving, compassionate treatment. That That's really what it feels like as a therapist and as a client, that you're just wrapping someone up in this warm oil and love mm. and very beautiful thing to do for someone wow just the way that she's describing it i'm already feeling nervous about it. <laughs> and you know honestly like and we'll have the demonstration but it's like this beautiful synchronized dance mm -hmm. between the two therapists it really goes beautifully together and um you, since you're talking about abhyanga can you share a little bit about how ayurveda in general the ayurvedic body work is different than say a traditional body work that they'd experience at at their local spa Sure. So when you go to a spa, just a regular spa and get massage, there's generally two main benefits and two things that most people go for to get massage. It's either pain management or stress management. Mm -hmm. So you are going to get those things with Abhyanga and with all the body work you do here. It is going to help, you know, if you have, you know, back pain, if you have, you know, sore joints, um, anxiety, you know, stress, things like that. It'll absolutely help with those things. But there's also a lot more to it mm. that it's also going to help balance your doshas that we're going to use oil tailored for every individual client. It's different for everyone, just based on what's going on with you, what's going on with your doshas, um, you know, what imbalances you might have, maybe something seasonal, you know, all those things become a factor and we tailor every treatment to fit clients individually to mm. help support their overall wellness, their particular situation, um, and bring lasting and very deep healing. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So it is a customizable approach specifically yeah. to the client and what the client is facing. So why don't you tell us about how is that customized approach decided? Yeah. So in Panchakarma, about two weeks before you come, um, our practitioner, one of them will spend over an hour with you, just understanding every detail, like your full background, what you're coming to us with, 
what happened when you're younger, what happened 10 years ago, five years ago, last month, and what is present today, what you want support with. And based on that, we understand like, okay, these elements, these doshas are out of balance. This is the state of your digestive fire. This is this, these are areas that we need to be mindful of, or we want to bring more prana to more healing to. And based on that, then we communicate with the lovely Julia and her team about, you know, we think that these herbs, the herbalized oils would be good, or this oil mixed with that oil would be good. And this type of therapy, and perhaps even like spending a little bit of extra time. And instead of even like one same therapy, we'll say, use this oil instead of that oil. So it's all fully, fully customized. Um, and so that's, that's kind of the flow from starting two weeks before. And so you can see there's a lot of preparatory work mm -hmm. that happens. You know, we keep a lot of oils in house, but for some clients, a totally different oil is important. So just this morning, we were saying, talking about this, like, you know, for that client, I think this oil would be good. She's like, okay, let me go ahead and make sure we order that and have that in stock because everything is that that curated. Nice, nice. So um, once you start doing the Abhyanga and the client, then one of the main purposes is to mobilize the stagnated toxins from the body so they can release those toxins. Mm -hmm. Why don't you tell us specifically, like, how does that work for someone who had never had it done, never heard of it? Like, how are you really moving those toxins and getting them out? So it's really the whole Panchakarma process together, where Abhyanga by itself is not a detox necessarily, mm -hmm. um, but it is a part of the detox within Panchakarma. Mm -hmm. So the Abhyanga, Swedan, and Shiradhara, one of the reasons why they're together is they work really well together to support the detoxing mm -hmm. process. So for Abhyanga, what we're doing is we're basically just trying to get as much tissues in the oil as possible. And then the client will sit in the steam box for about 10 minutes. And that's really just to break a gentle sweat. It's not to sweat out toxins. It's not, you know, it's not very hardcore. It's really just pretty gentle. And that encourages the pores to open. So the oil from the Abhyanga can go deeper into these tissues. And that helps guide toxins down the GI tract because that's the way we want to release them is through the GI tract mm -hmm. um, during the week of Panchakarma. Nice. And the ones you guide them to the GI tract, I guess they eliminate through urine bowel movement and sweat that would be Rinda you can speak to this more but um through the basti so mm -hmm. the, through the basti enemas that we do here. yeah so part of it is there is a purgation process and we talked about this the last webinar there is a purgation where we do like a more intentional purging of the gi tract and then like she was saying there's some enemas and those enemas there is quite a bit of further release of the toxins and they are also equally like nutritious because we we boil herbs into that into the water so um they kind of have a a dual dual purpose in that sense yeah so it is the holistic approach then. yeah definitely all everything that is happening the before the during and after yeah. which we talked about on our last webinar yeah great now can we talk a little bit about or a lot <laughs> about the benefits because there is a ton of benefits in many different aspects yeah. of the body the mind and the soul so why don't why don't we start with you yeah so benefits of abhyanga like one is of course just the relaxation just what we started this conversation with the touch the calming the the whole nervous system just being like, okay, I can, I can turn off for a little bit, you know, and just, and heal. And what happens when your nervous system goes from that sympathetic to the parasympathetic state, it really gets into a deeply like healing space. So, I mean, even at nighttime, when you go to sleep, that is a parasympathetic state, you know, you are in rest literally the space between your cells, they, it expands the space mm -hmm. between your brain cells expand. And what that allows is for the toxins and any waste cellular waste to go into that and then go to the lymphatic system and then going to your GI system to be purged. So that is like really, really important just in terms of repair, even like forget just stress release, but repair of the body going into that state is really important. Um, it's really good for your skin, you know, like in terms of um, the the dryness that happens with as we age. Um, I was actually listening to a podcast this morning as I was driving up to Soham about with aging, literally there is 
less moisture. There's more drying because of a variety of cellular reasons to that. But there is more drying. And what oil does is it brings back that moisture. It brings, it seals that moisture in. When I was in high school, no, in middle school, my dad and I did this little, um, you know, your science fair experiment. <laughs> and we compared um, like plain lotion to oil. And I don't even remember the details, but the oil definitely retained the moisture better mm -hmm. than just plain lotion. So what it does to just like in terms of just your oil and an anti-aging effect and like wrinkles mm -hmm. and just like that luster back to our skin. Um, it also, because your skin is absorbing it, especially around joints, mm -hmm. your joints need from an Ayurvedic perspective is called Sleshika Gaffa. It's a specific type of oil lubrication, earth and water element in the joint space. So that's being as a, whether it's the joints or specific parts of the body where you have low back um, tension, muscular tension, um, all of that is being nourished as well. And I have more, but why don't you use the in <laughs> with a few, because this is your area of expertise. Well, absolutely. You know, I think you touched on a lot of them that Abhyanga, you know, beneficial to receive touch, um, beneficial for the body, beneficial for the mind, um, just really deeply nourishing for yourself, uh, help to be helping to balance your doshas um, and really just kind of a sweet, uh, sweet addition to the panchakarma process mm -hmm. for just, you know, having people have the opportunity to feel nourished. Cause mm -hmm. I think there's definitely an emotional piece of mm -hmm. yoga as well about, you know, we are so busy in our lives and we stay in our heads a lot. Mm -hmm. And there's something about having people touching your body that it's like, Oh, I have a body yeah. <laughs> and it, it's, I live in it's, here <laughs> and it hurts sometimes and that place feels tender and you know it's a little bit vulnerable and there's something really deeply nourishing and healing about that to be able to just feel those things again mm -hmm. and have the space and feel supported to be able to receive that yeah, yeah. beautifully said and actually that is a perfect segue way to the question of why two therapists? Because you're talking about the touch, right? But there's a difference when you have just one masseuse or doing any specific type of massage versus having actually having two therapies that are actually working on this. So can you tell us about that experience and what is the meaning behind two therapists? Yes. So yeah, having two therapists, it really is kind of a dance between both that it is synchronized. So it's not just two people working on you doing their own thing, or no. it's two people working together doing the same thing that maybe one person's on one leg and one person's on the other leg, and they're doing it at the same time and really just um, experiencing that tradition of Ayurveda with having two therapists work on you um, is something really unique to the panchakarma process. I also kind of feel like, you know, in, in the yoga practice of breath work, when we're doing like alternate nostril breathing, we're kind of intentionally doing left and then right to kind of balance left and right. And then you can do just left or just right to activate the solar or the lunar. And I feel like when you're doing both at the mm. same time, it balances the left and right part aspects of our being, the solar, the lunar, the left and right parts of our brain, because you're having it equal pressure, same rhythm, and it does balance kind of both versus one and then the other mm -hmm. you know in the end it is pretty balanced but it's very different when it's being touched on at the same time like that that balancing effect is way way deeper in my personal experience not just <laughs> from a theoretical perspective but like my personal experience with that has been such that makes so much sense and also from an energetics point of view our human body actually have the, what I call the highways of energy yes. is the Ida and the Pingala. Yeah. So now that you're talking about the sun and the moon, the yin and the yang, the feminine and the masculine, actually mobilizing that energy in both directions. Yeah, that's so beautiful. Yeah. Nice. Um, all right. So we will be doing a demonstration. And um, can you tell us before we jump into the demonstration, how does an Abhyanga start? So Nabiyanga starts with the client laying on the table, and we start with holding hands and chanting. 
And that's how we start every treatment is, you know, the three of us, the two therapists and the client, we just all hold hands in a circle and we chant Hari Om three times. And that's just a really beautiful way to start the massage. It's a heart opener just for us to all connect to and set the intention for the session that this is how we start with uh, all of our hearts open, uh, that connection between the three of us. And then we also do a prayer at the very beginning and it's just silent. It can be anything you want it to be, uh, even just setting an intention for the session. And, um, you know, I usually do, you know, an intention for the client to receive what they need in that moment, whatever mm. that is. Beautiful. So to get us started, I would like to invite you to gently close your eyes so we can do the Hariyom. And Julia will lead the Hariyom for us. Um, Gently open our eyes. Mm -hmm. Welcome back as we will begin here our live session where we're going to show you with Julia and Ramona how we do our Abhyanga here at Soho Mountain Healing Resort. So we'll get ready. Take this. Let's see. All right, so while we're getting here ready, um, we are going to do the demonstration with the client uh, facing down. But obviously when we start the Obianga, the client is actually facing up. Yes. So tell us about that beginning. So the client is facing up, we do the Hariyam, we set the intention, yes. and then what do we do next? Yeah, so typically the therapist will start with a process called polarity. Um, this is a process where the um the the therapists are grounding both poles of the body so the head and the feet and what that does is it brings a really really like grounding is grounding through the head you know from a i think even chinese medicine perspective the head and the feet have so many like important pressure points um we call it marma in ayurveda so these two areas have such a profound effect in terms of energy flowing out as flowing in. Mm -hmm. um, and so to ground those two areas will allow for the body to really settle in and be prepared to receive. Nice, nice. Yeah. So they start one on the uh, one of the therapists on the feet and another one on the head, and then they start working their way. Okay. Yes. Nice. And then next, um, they typically will start with the head massage. Mm -hmm. Um, and that is just divine. You know, they pour you, I mean, you feel the flow of this like really warm oil, just like taking hold. And because oil is dense, it's really heavy also. Okay. So it really kind of gets your mind to just immediately shut off. Yeah. And then they'll pour into the ears okay. as well too, to really kind of calm. And because that's another gateway of like excess vata and prana entering the body. Can you tell us more about the ears piece? So what is the purpose of putting the oil in the ears? Yeah. Because so that would be like a different you, sensation, right? Totally. So there are certain areas that the body is really impacted with vata. Mm -hmm. One is the head and one is, please, you guys can go yeah. ahead and start. We're just talking. Yeah, we just have to go to another shot. Sure, that's totally fine. Yeah, so, and we'll just keep sharing as um, they prepare our client. So, like I was saying, as the, um, 
the, this is a really impactful area in terms of vata air. And in Ayurveda, 80% okay. of diseases is caused by vata. So you want to be very careful of that. So the head, your ear. So if you, I mean, I think we all intuitively know this. We wear earmuffs yes. <laughs> in the middle of winter because that can be so profoundly affected, affected by air and wind, especially. And so this is a common place. If you really want to ground vata, pour some warm oil into the ears. You could even wow. do this at home. Okay. Um, but they don't just pour a little bit of oil. They pour oil into mm. the ears. And you, again, you just further, you just kind of ground even more. And it's so nourishing. So um, that really helps with the whole head and neck region and vata. And then they'll go and proceed with the head and neck region mm -hmm. and massaging there again with plenty of oil. So just this initial sequence, really focusing on this, the, the poles of the body and bringing a sense of grounding with tons of warm oil is really, really beautiful and grounding. Nice, nice. Now you did talk a little bit about the oils um, and how those are herbalized oils specifically to the doshas of that giving client so that customized approach um, is there in a specific oil for in a specific season um, do they change yeah. so okay. um definitely like I I find myself changing the oils based on the season even when I do my own self-massage at home okay but in this case in budget karma we're really looking at their imbalance so we also will, we may mix two oils. So a lot of people in the kapha season will have a kapha imbalance, but they may also have a fifth amount. So we may be mixing the two oils. So it really is um, kind of taking everything into consideration. Okay, great. So we're going to get started here with our um, live presentation <laughs> of how we do a bianga here. So we have Ramona and Julia. And they're going to be starting here, the demonstration. So what we're gonna do now is Ramona, I'll have you step right over here. And we're gonna uh, show you all the back sequence for Abhyanga. So this is um, just the full sequence that we would do on the back. So I'm gonna start with just placing my hands here while Ramona pours the oil. And this is herbalized oil, it's dosha specific, it's warmed. Uh, we have the oil in warmers, so it's, um, just the perfect temperature throughout the entire massage. And now we're going to add Mahanarayan oil. So this is a warming oil. It's uh, especially good for pain and it's good for vata. And we use this on the back and the shoulders just because so many people have issues or have pain in these areas. And it's very beneficial. And for the first couple minutes of this massage, Ramona and I are just going to work kind of independently. Or this is where we do a little bit more specific work. So this is something where it would come in that if I knew Harish had low back pain, I would work a little bit extra on his low back and just work on getting these oils in the tissues. Um, so I'm going to work on the low back and then Ramona is going to work on the upper back. And this is a good time in the massage where you just kind of every therapist kind of gets to shine a little bit mm -hmm. where it's what they do. Uh, Ramona specializes in Thai yoga uh, and Thai massage. So she does some techniques sometimes that I'm like, ooh, that's a new one. <laughs> nice. So as we're working through the back, and now you're working independently, right? Um, then is there a point where then the two of you, where you're working on the back, is that synchronized the same way that you do it when uh, the client is facing uh, up? Yes. So we're going to go into that now. So I'm going to do something a little exaggerated so Ramona knows we're moving on and now I'm going to go on the sides of the back and she's going to go in the middle and do that twice and now she's going to come over to the side and now this is when the synchronized part starts so we're doing some deep effleurage in the lamina groove so the pressure is coming from our lower fingertips here our thumb is just acting as a guide Doing some fanning, showing we're transitioning. Now we're gonna do this one more time. 
when we get to the top, now we're gonna do our thumb circles. So we're right in the lamina groove right now on the either side of the spine. This is where a lot of people have knots and all those little crunchy parts that feel tender. And now fanning again. And we were moving on. And now here's everyone's favorite move, especially those people who like the deep tissue. So we're gonna use our elbows in the lamina groove. So we're right on either side of Harisha's spine, just going straight up the back. Can you tell us as you're going through it, like how deep is that part of the massage? You know, for Abhyanga overall, if it's a scale of one to 10, I'd say we're between a three and a five. This move I would probably say is like a five out of 10. So like, I would say like a medium deep pressure but it can be a little bit more or less just based on what the client wants. Okay. Now we're gonna do something similar, but around the scapula. So now we're outlining the scapula, first with our hand and then our forearm and an elbow. And even this can be customized for different clients. You know, some people have what I would call like a really earthy body type. And so we would do a little bit more pressure here. And some people, you know, uh, like more of a vata body type where they're a little bit smaller, they might, that might be too intense for some people. Mm -hmm. So we may do a little more or less pressure depending on the client and what they need. Now we're transitioning again. Thumb circles. So we're gonna do thumb circles all the way around the scapula. So again, we're outlining bones. So we're gonna go all the way around. And then this is kind of breaking a rule of massage, but we're gonna go straight up the scapula now. We usually don't massage on top of bones, but our Ayurveda likes to break rules. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna go right over the scapula. Feels really nice. Transition again. It's so beautiful to watch this synchronized movement in between the two therapists. It's just, is that flow is a is is healing to watch as well, you know, not only the client that is receiving it. Absolutely. So now we're finished with the back. So we're gonna do just a little bit of polarity to finish up. So we're gonna redrape the back. And now together, Ramona and I are gonna place our hands on the client's back. So we're gonna have one hand on the upper back and one hand on the lower back. And at this point, we would have finished the entire massage. So you can imagine that we've just um, gone through the entire sequence. And now we're just kind of letting all that integrate. Now our bottom hands are going to the client's hands. So it's palm to palm. Upper hand goes to client's low back. Our lower hand goes to the client's foot. So now it's palm to foot. And namaste. Beautiful. Thank you for that demonstration. And um, I wanted to ask you, so you talked about polarities and um, you went and you placed the hands in a specific place. Can you tell us a little bit about, first of all, what that means? Second of all, what it does for the client and why the location of the hands in those specific places? So polarity therapy is all about balancing the positive and negative aspects of the body. So again, this is Dr. Laz's sequence, he created it. So all of the holds that we do that we call polarity holds are focused on balancing positive and negative aspects. Beautiful. And we had a question online, how long is the Abhyanga session? And we could talk about that in terms of like with the whole body surrounding sequence versus, you know, someone to just come in and get an Abhyanga. Yes, so a two person Abhyanga is 50 minutes. Wow. So five zero, so just under an hour. 
And with two therapists working on you, it really feels like a lot more. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then the whole body serenity as a whole, we give two hours for it. Mm -hmm. And really two hours is a good amount of time. It's really enough time to be on a massage table, enough time that, you know, it really feels deep and full and um, you're going to feel very relaxed after. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it to have two hands, I mean, four hands on you for 50 minutes, is effectively more like a hour and 40 minute massage because you're having twice the work done. So yeah it's, yeah, it's very powerful. Yeah, and when when we talked about the whole serenity experience, right? Um, for the clients that do Panchakarma is every single day, except for the day of arrival and the day of departure. So these two hour block of your time for healing purposes um, happens every single day. Now, um, do we have any more questions? Do we have any more questions for anyone else? This is yes. a time, I know that the um, the live that we show you here was just the back. If we were to show you a whole of Bianca, it will be, as we said, a lot longer than what we did here. And it does begin uh, with the client facing up and then halfway through it, we turn you around and is what you saw today. Yeah. But if you have any questions, please. Yeah, please share. I have, I have the chat open. One of them is, um just questions about the three and four day serenity retreats um pricing and like how does that work sure uh so the three night uh retreat is the serenity retreat it starts on a thursday and ends on a sunday and the four night it starts on a sunday and ends on a thursday and for both you have your accommodations included as you can see we're in the beautiful blue ridge mountains of north carolina we're in a 100 acre property. You have a beautiful, spacious room with a king size bed. All the rooms have a fireplace, have a balcony overlooking at the Blue Ridge Mountains. And then for anyone that comes and stays, you can say for the three night, for the four night, you can actually pair them up for a full yeah, week of we a have serenity. That happen all the time. All the time. And yeah. even clients that come for the Pancha Karma, they actually decide, depending on where they're mm -hmm. coming from, that they want to stay a few days before or a few days after. So they pair it up at their Pancha Karma with the serenity retreat. And then you will get one Abhyanga, one Swetna, and one Shirodara with this amazing team. Um, and also all your meals are, are included. And you have the option to also sign up for an add-on of a consultation with a practitioner. Like Yeah, that. and that's one thing I wanted to just share that, you know, Pancha Karma is a process. <laughs> there's a process. It starts two weeks before. There's things going on the week during. Yeah. It's a process. And so some people prefer to come and still have an Ayurvedic experience. So the Serenity Retreat is perfect for that. They come for a week. They'll oftentimes be set up so that they have a consultation with the practitioner on the Monday of their arrival. And then they, from that interaction, they understand, okay, I should have these additional therapies in addition to the whole by serenity that they automatically get. Um, and then there's other things too. You know, we have like Jyotish, astrology consultations. We have one-on-one -on -one yoga to really kind of give you a catered yoga program. Um, so all that, they kind of piecemeal their own experience if they don't want this like in-depth in panchakarma. Yeah, and just to add to that, we also have uh, a morning routine practices um, that we do every single day here at the resort, regardless of whether you're staying with us for the Panchakarma or yes. the Serenity, which is the Homa ceremony at 630 in the morning where you get to connect with the fire element and really the fire represents transformation and it's also the acne that we have within our digestion so you get the chance to connect there and also clear the atmosphere around you and around the area as well and then after that we go into the activity room and we do uh, pranayama yoga and meditation which everything supports the entire healing and wellness process that you may be going through yeah, we also have Ayurveda classes throughout the week. That's right. And every evening there's some amazing program, whether it's yoga nidra or sound bathing or kirtan or forest bathing. That's so right. it really is a true retreat experience. Um, Greta was asking, are we accepting bookings for next year for seven nights? Absolutely. We have the whole calendar open. So um, whether it's Panchakarma or Serenity Retreats, we're accepting those. Um, what about if they want to come with a spouse? How does it's, that work? How does that work? Always. <laughs> and what I find is like when it comes to family, 
when one actually begins that process of healing and wanting to feel better, um, the spouses or even the kids within the family actually want to join. And it's a beautiful thing to see how that ripple effect starts happening within a family, within a community, within friends. So your spouse is welcome. Your spouse can stay with us if you're doing the panchakarma. They can stay with us to do the panchakarma as well if they wish to, or they have the option to do the serenity retreat. So you're here for seven days, and then they can do the seven days of serenity, which will be including the accommodations uh, for the meals instead of being on a mono diet, instead of eating kitchery every day, they'll have a vegan or vegetarian. And then uh, they'll have that one Abhyanga, one Sweden, and one Shirodara while the person that is having the Panchakarma is getting it every day. Yeah. Uh, but yes, you have options and we can always work through that. Now, if you haven't visited our website, we just launched a brand new website that has a lot of information, beautiful pictures of our property, videos of our properties, all you know, reality, what we have created in here. So I would encourage that you go visit our website at SohomeHealing.com. And there is a lot of information on the retreats. So you can see the differences between the two and see what appeals to you, right? Yeah. So the, you're talking about food. There's yeah. another question about food choices. And so first of all, I like to highlight to all of our guests that Pancha Karma, yes, Kitri is the staple. That is per provided all day long but our chef chef michael dear chef michael <laughs> he is so talented and so creative with the ingredients that are acceptable in panchakarma and makes these like most amazing side dishes so i tell people okay eat your kitchen because that's what you're supposed to eat and you know it it is um like kind of a true mono um but you're also is totally fine to enjoy these side dishes that chef makes for everyone because it is Make, using the ingredients acceptable in panchakarma and these dishes i mean they really are divine the your experience here is an elevated dining experience so there is no buffet you'll be seated you'll be served everything will be provided to you on your table so it's truly an elevated dining experience and many of our guests after their serenity retreat they leave asking the chef for like a cookbook because they're like yes. this is good when are you coming out with a cookbook it's that good so most so people they they come like i can't do kitchen for a whole week i'm like don't worry that can be a problem at all yeah. that's right actually okay. a good example of that is his chia pudding which has become famous, like everybody that has the chia pudding in the morning and they're like, I didn't know I can have that. Yes, you can. It's been <laughs> approved and you can have it. And he, uh, he does delicious. it in a very appropriate way. Yes, yeah. he does. Um, another really good question for you, Julia. Can we add additional treatments when we stay like the busties? And what is a busty? <laughs> That's a great question. So busty means bladder. Mm -hmm. So what a busty treatment is, is we make a bladder uh, out of chickpea flour, whole wheat flour, and water. And that acts as like a container to hold oil. So we put that basti on different parts of the body. Um, you know, maybe if you will want something for your heart, you can do a harid or a heart basti. And if you have back pain, you would do a prushta basti. Um, maybe if knee pain, you would do a janu basti. And then we fill it up with warm medicated oil to target what uh, what you want targeted specifically. And to answer the other part of the question, yes, absolutely, you can add those on. Um, whether you're doing panchakarma, R&R, &R, um, or even just coming in for a treatment, we can absolutely add those on for anyone. Yeah, our um, in your design call, the practitioner will kind of cue you in into saying that I think these will be beneficial. And same thing with the serenity retreat. If you had any interest and inclination, you could certainly go ahead and schedule that. Or if you have that consultation, your practitioner can cue you in into those. And the buses are really beautiful. There's definitely a physical benefit um, like that. Just having a pool of oil over an area, it does truly penetrate mm -hmm. and heal the underlying area from a physical perspective. But I've also observed that there's a deep emotional healing too, especially ones over various chakra areas, you know, like the heart area. I know there's a client who came just a few weeks ago and was very, it was very unexpected for that client how impactful the rib bussy was for her mm -hmm. in her healing experience. And she asked, like, I think I need more of those. Um, similarly, the bussy bussy, which is right over the womb space or the bladder, 
um, women, especially, you know, who have had trauma, um, abuse, miscarriages, loss, or even like natal wounds, you know, like um, problems with connecting with their mother. That's a very deeply healing space as well. So I've, those in particular, I've noticed a lot of like emotional healing as well. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So if any of you are feeling not only at the physical level, but also at the emotional level, anything that you're wishing to release at the time that you're making your reservation, feel free to ask for those additional vastas that will help. Yeah. There's also a question on uh, the Vasa residential project that we have. Yes. yes. So we announced that recently with the launch of our website. And as you know, this is So Home Mountain Healing Resort where we do the Panchakarma as well as the Serenity Retreats. But now we also have an additional 100 acre right next to So Home where we have the So Home Residences. Uh, this is a piece of land that we purchased with the intent of building residences for like-minded uh, like minded community. So if you are feeling drawn for um, living healthier life, to living around people that are conscious about the impact that we are creating in this earth, about living at less of a footprint, about dedicating more time and effort towards your own well-being as well as the well-being of your community this is the place to be. Um, so we are on the really early stages. We went ahead and posted on our website. Feel free to go visit it. It's called the So Home Residences. And then you can see all the information in there. But more importantly, if this is a really interest and calling to you and to your family, feel free to submit that VIP form. That way you can become part of our um, VIP list and we will be sending uh, information every so often just to keep you up to date as yeah. to how this project is evolving because yeah. obviously we want you all to be part of the behind the scenes of how it's evolving. Yes, yes. And Greta was asking, will families be welcome at the residences? I sure hope so. I have family <laughs> moving there. So, <laughs> so children, it'll be very inclusive. Um, it will be adjacent to this area so the kids can have like their space to play. I'm definitely going to be involved in making sure it's it's kid friendly, but in a very like not in a in an integrative way. Like our hope for the future generation is to upbring them and have their upbringing in a very integrative way that they also are connecting with nature. They're also connecting with these ancient living practices. So that's it. Um, so that's the intention. And so there are a lot of questions about that. And just saying again, that um, the details are coming. We're in the early stages of the planning. Uh, we do have beautiful renderings. We've had the land planning done. Um, but there are some steps still. So just join that list if you're interested in learning more. Um, what is the price for the Panchakarma retreat? Sure. Um, so it ranges in between uh, 6,400 and 7,800. Those were our opening rates, if you will. Um, and we are actually running a promotion right now. So if you were to sign up right now, between now and the end of the year, there is a $700 off, which is equal to $100 off per night. Um, we are seeing a lot of people taking advantage of that. So just make sure that you look at our calendar and see what we have available uh, left for the year because these spots are going pretty fast. We also have another promotion for Thanksgiving going on, mm -hmm. which is a 20% off for the week of Thanksgiving. And we only have a few spots left available. Only four, only four left less, available, yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, and obviously that 20% off is more than the 700 off. Uh, so if Thanksgiving is something that you want to consider spending with us uh, and dedicating it to be grateful to your own body and your own health, we will welcome you here. But yeah, the prices are right now between 6,400 and 7,800. And that includes everything. The meals, the therapies, the treatments, the consultations, before the yoga, and the after. before, the after. Yeah. Um, yeah, we didn't talk about the after. We talked about the after on the prior webinar, but you heard about the consultations that you get before you book, um, actually before you arrive. And you also have one more call with a practitioner a week after you have left. And this is to check up on you, to see how you're integrating, how things are going at home. 
And then you also become a member of our Loving Living Wisdom membership, which is a membership where we all get together on a weekly basis. And then we share new um, Ayurvedic practices with you. So that way you can implement them into your everyday life. So this can become a life-changing event for you as opposed to just a seven-day practice. Yeah. We really want to help you adopt this for the rest of your life. Yeah. And that integration is very important to us for sure. Um, so yeah, I mean, and a lot of people will ask things like, it's going to be cold there. And I just highlight, we have fireplaces in every single room, wood burning fireplaces. And we have fireplaces in the lounge. It's very cozy. It's actually really beautiful. It is. It's a, honestly, this area, the, the beauty of every season is just so unique. There isn't a time of the year that I'm like, oh, I wish I could get out of town or anything like that. Cause it's just a different unique beauty each time of the year. So, um, yeah, all someone's asking, are these for a spots for Panchakarma? Panchakarma is available. The Serenity Retreat is available. But the offerings that she's talking about, the discounts are for Panchakarma. That's right. All right. We made it to yeah. the end of this one session. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Thank you, Brenda, so much Thank for you. your wisdom and everything that you share Thank as you, well. Julia. Julia, amazing yes. to be able to see this live. I don't know any other place that we show you this live. Yeah. <laughs> um, Thank you all for participating. If you have any questions, please feel free to visit our website at SoHomeHealing.com or feel free to send us an email at ReservationSoHomeHealing.com and you can reach out for Sandy, Renda, Julia, whomever. We're your family here. So uh, thank you so much for participating and we are looking forward to seeing you again next month. We will be sharing an email with the information about the topic for next month. So just be in the lookout for it. Other than that, thank you very much and namaste. Thank you, everyone.